Greetings everyone, DFG here, coming to you from the cemetery, truth from the graveyard. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about a couple of things today, real quickly, okay? Um, so give me a minute of your time, if you don't mind, alright? Hey, first I want to talk to you about, it's a continuation on, on a message I, I, I put out recently about uh, rulership and power. Uh, I just want to bring around a little bit of clarity around that. When I talk in terms of uh, rulership, you know, it goes back to, I'll give you an example, Proverbs. Uh, nine, I'm sorry, 22 and 7 pretty much says that the rich rule over the poor and the beggar is a slave to the lender. So when I'm talking about power, I'm talking about the rich rulership. I'm talking about the power of the United States government, for an example. You know, the government that, you know, that this banner flies over. All right. When I talk, I'm, when I'm, when I say power, I'm talking about having the power over the, over the money system having power over the judicial system, power over the legislative system, you know, power to determine, you know, if you're going to be able to live in a certain place, power to declare war, power to undeclare war, power to negotiate with other countries, other, you know, uh, sovereign entities, power to do business, power not to do business. So when I talk about power, and I'm talking about, in this essence, rulership, then I'm not talking about you know, being the uh, boss of your own home or the boss over your children, that's authority. And authority and rulership are two different things. So you don't have true, you know, power unless you have the, 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 the unless you, you, you have the, the, the ability. I'm sorry to take, I'm trying to think of the right word I want to use. Unless you can bring about social change, you follow me, through your own will without the permission of anybody else. That's power. So when you hear me talk about the rich rule, rule over the poor, first of all, it's not, I didn't coin the phrase, it's a biblical phrase. It's coming from Solomon, the wisest man to ever walk the earth. And even by his own uh, declaration, the rich rule over the poor. In the beggar is going to be a slave to the lender. So when you start talking about power and rulership, then unless you have the kind of economic power, you know, that I just talked about, the uh, decision-making power that I just talked about, the rulership power that I just talked about, then you are still powerless. Okay? So that's what I meant when, I, when, I, when you heard me talk about power. It wasn't about, you know, bossing your kids around or bossing your, you know, being the head of your family. That's authority. And you do have authority in that area. But when it comes down to true rulership, you can't have rulership without the things that I just mentioned. Power over the media. Power over the economic system. Power over the religious system. Power over the governmental system. How you're going to be governed. How I'm going to be governed day and out. Okay? So I hope that brings a little bit more clarity to the powership aspect of it. Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is what is a true patriot? And, you know, with this stuff going on, you know, over the last year or so with Colin Kaepernick, I think we've all now come to realize that, you know, um, his agenda has shifted now. Now he's become the face of Nike, uh, the face of globalization, uh, and not so much more the, the, the face of, you know, protest as it relates to, by his, you know, words, you know, uh, police, you know, shooting, you know, innocent black men for no reason. Uh, if you saw the commercial, then you saw clearly that he's moved on from that now. I know a lot of you guys want to disagree with me, and that's, that's your right. But, I mean, time will bear out what I'm saying. If you watch that commercial, I'm sure you didn't see any uh, depictions of police brutality in that Nike commercial with Colin Kaepernick. So, uh, either he forgot to put it in, or he was okay to put it in. You decide on that one, okay? But if that's where he started, it seems to me... He would have insisted on that being a part of the commercial along with everything else. He got everybody else. He got the Arab boxer and he got the, you know, the handicap or the crippled swimmer. But he forgot about the black brothers getting shot down, you know, you know, almost weekly now by, you know, police officers. And none of these police officers are being held accountable for killing them. He, he seemed to have forgotten that. So did Nike in their commercial. Moving right along. So, but when I talk about true patriotism, it's not about, as I mentioned again, a flag or, or a song. You know, when you start getting caught up in patriotism, 
especially as people of color, Native Americans, you know, those who were always here. When you start getting caught up in that kind of stuff, you, you know, you, you're missing it. It's like a, 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 a ant biting, you know, a stinging a lion. You know, a lion might get annoyed and stump his behind, but, but he ain't changing the lion's uh, date. Where the lion, if he gets annoyed enough, he can step on the ant. So when you get caught up in a flag and a song, guys, you're getting caught up into, you know, again, it's like a lion, you know, in an ant. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think like an ant. I think like a lion. And so should you. So being a patriot goes far beyond songs, you know what I'm saying, and flags. It goes around, you know, you know, really thinking, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and believing that, you know, this is your country. And a true patriot understands that. And what do I mean by this is your country? Native Americans, so-called African Americans, black people, whatever you want to call yourself. Instead of, but you, you, do you realize that every single war that, that's been fought on this land, you participated in, including the Revolutionary War. And I know when you look at it, you, you think it was the 13 colonies and they fought against Great Britain and they ran. No, you were there. You were probably the main reason for the fight at the end of the day because it was a lot more you than the colonists. A lot more you. And I'm sure you wanted the British out of here because what they were doing, stealing and pilferaging the land, putting in rules and, 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 and assaulting your culture, our culture, you wanted them out more than the, the, the colonists wanted them out. And you fought right along, or the colonists, let me say that correctly. The colonists fought right alongside you. And not only did you fight in that war, you fought in the French-American War. You fought in the British-American War. You fought in uh, the Civil War. You fought in the, you know, the Indian Wars, unfortunately, against yourselves, you, uh, ourselves. You fought in World War I, the Spanish-American War. You fought in World War II. You fought in the Korean War. You fought in the Vietnam War. You fought in the war with, you know, of aggression, the terrorism war. You know, the war that, that, that how you say that? It's like the war that's the gift that keeps on giving, that war. You follow them? Whenever they want to spend your tax dollars, you know what I'm saying? That war, you know, they justify another new war to keep on spending your money. I digress. But what I'm saying to you, when you start talking about patriotism, you know, this is your country. So why wouldn't I be a patriot to Turtle Island, this land? Why wouldn't you be a patriot? Because at the end of the day, this is our home. We can't go to Europe and claim Europe lands. Maybe some of us have ancestry there. When I say some people of color could have ancestry there, Native Americans possibly. But this is our land. I'm talking about the so-called African-American Negro, colored person, black person, nigger, you know, all of those names that you've gotten over the last 200 years. You follow me? Except for your true name, native to the land. This is your country. This is the country that fed your ancestors. This is the country that are, feed, that are feeding you, feeding me. This is the land of milk and honey. This is, this is the land that every other ethnic group around the world wants to come to. If nothing else, to, to, to partake in all the things that our land has to offer. The most precious soil on the earth. So when you start talking about patriotism and what that's about, guys, thinking about it as from a flag or a song, it's like, again, it's like, it's thinking like an ant when you should be thinking like a lion. All right? A lion roars and it kills. An ant stings and it annoys. Okay? And if, I, and if, and if you're thinking like an ant, then you're not thinking the way you need to be thinking. If, if you're allowing, you know, your rights as a patriot in this country to be determined by foreigners who have come into your country. You follow me? Quite frankly, they invaded your country. And now they have taken over your country. And if you're letting them dictate to you that, you know, you can't be a patriot or you shouldn't be talking about patriotism or you feel like it's an insult to call yourself a patriot, then you're not thinking clearly because it has never been about the flag to us. It has never been about the national anthem to us or any other, you know, rally, pep rally, get all the team together, and, you know, kumbaya songs. True patriotism is a love of the land, a love of the people, a love of the culture, the building of a culture, the establishing of a value system. 
that you can pass down from generation to generation to generation. That's what a culture looks like. That's what patriotism looks like. And I'm going to say this to every single Native American, so-called African American, so-called colored person, so-called Negro, so-called black American, so-called nigger. I'm talking to you. You know, you need to understand that this is your home. This has always been your home. And this will always be your home. And nobody's going to run you anywhere. And you need to get that thought out of your mind. You follow me? You, as for me and my house, we're going to stay right here and we're going to serve Yahweh. And the foreigners who are here, if they want to stay here, that's up to them. But if they keep living the way that they're living, they got to deal with Yahweh, guys. They got to deal with the, with the, with the oncoming onslaught, onslaught of the judgment of the Creator. And I know in my heart of hearts, when the vengeance of the Lord comes down, it's going to be tough on all of those who have come against Yahweh's people or those who participate in, in the violence and the hostility towards Yahweh people. In other words, Native Americans right here, Aboriginal, copper color people. They're going to be in a lot of trouble. And, and they're already seeing some of that. All these different crises that are going on. You know, upside down birth rate, opioids. You know what I'm saying? Smaller families, diseases, sickness, illnesses. Cancers, skin cancers, you name it. Aging before their time. I can go on and on and on. All these judgments are only going to intensify until they step back and do what's right. And if they choose not to, that's fine. That's on them. It has nothing to do with you and I. All right? We need to stay focused on what's important. Stay focused on culture. Stay focused on the land because it is our land. We eat from this land. When we leave, we go back to this land. Focus upon, you know, self-respect identifying ourselves, our history, how to love one another, how to build a nation inside of this nation, and reestablish ourselves as the, the gift that we were to mankind. And I mean that. We are the gift to mankind. We are. And then we need to know that, and we need to understand that, and we don't need to be following after anthems and songs and athletes and all this other, you know, uh, you know, buffoonery, chicanery. I think I said that word right. <laughs> leave all the chicanery to, to, to the clowns. You know, leave all the, you know what I'm saying? The silliness to the ants. You're a lion, you need to act like a lion. Again, and that's not talking, this is not hate speech. This is just truth. This is love of thyself. This is self-preservation. This is integrity, talking with honor. So, so people of color, so-called Negroes, so-called Blacks, so-called African Americans, so-called niggers, and coons, and raccoons, or whatever those names they got. Ignore that foolishness. You follow me? That means nothing, including flags and songs. What means the most is how you care about yourself, how you care about your family, how you care about your generation, what you understand about your ancestors, what you believe about your land, and most importantly, how you serve and worship Yahweh. And the last thing I want to say, guys, real quick, you guys always hear me talk about, you know, white Jesus, you know, daddy white Jesus, you know, the Christian white Jesus. I thought I'd bring a picture so you can see white Jesus. See, that's white Jesus. See a white Jesus right there? Here's another picture of white Jesus. See, that's white Jesus. Yep. Now you know. So when you hear me talk about white Jesus, it's not a figment of my imagination. I didn't paint this picture, by the way. I took this picture out of a Bible, out of a Christian Bible, all right? And the Christian Bible was teaching our people that this was our God. Right here, white Jesus. You see him? Come on. You see white Jesus, all right? That's white Jesus. So, hmm. What did he look like, by the way? Now you know. DFG, Truth for the Graveyard. Thank you for listening. Share the video. Subscribe. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.